Your host this afternoon is an author, radio and TV presenter, actor, columnist, screenwriter, yes man, and head of a self-declared nation state based in his bedroom. A writer and performer for Assassin's Creed, he won a BAFTA for his narration of video game phenomenon, Thomas was alone. Please welcome the multi-talented Danny Wallace. Oh, feel the excitement in the room as one of Britain's least known television personalities takes to the stage. Are you well? Are you happy? Are you a little bit drunk? This is all I do for an hour. I just sort of ask basic questions and get you to cheer. It's all good. Hello and welcome to the Golden Joystick Awards 2015 here at the Indigo Room in London and live across the world on Twitch. What a pleasant change to see so many gamers drunk in a darkened room. They said it would never happen, but we dared to dream. 33 years these awards have been running. Let's hear it for the joysticks. 33. That is one for every year Jesus was alive. And there will be times during this long afternoon when we will all feel like shouting out his name and asking how he can allow such suffering. 33 years. I wouldn't say this event's been running a long time, but the first computer game winner was an abacus. And if I have worried you that this is going to be a long afternoon, please don't worry. This year the organisers have streamlined things. They've hacked the awards right down to just 24 awards. And in some categories, a mere 12 or 13 nominees. Hang on to your hats, ladies and gents, because this will whiz by as we find out who's won what over the next six to seven days. <laughs> now tonight, I feel the heavy hand of history on my shoulder. Past hosts of these awards include Dave Lee Travis and Justin Lee Collins both of whom went on to feel the heavy hand of the police on theirs. <laughs> what is it about the middle name Lee? Jamie Lee Curtis must be bricking it right now. But back in 1983, Dave Lee Travis gave the first gaming award to Jetpack. What that man wouldn't have given for a Jetpack 30 years later when the coppers came knocking. He was, he was cleared. He was cleared. It was fine. But enough about people accused of not treating women with enough respect. Let's get back to the video games industry. Which, which, we really, which we really should. Now this year's shortlist is the most diverse yet. Sony's brutal Bloodborne leads the pack with nine nominations, followed closely by acclaimed indie hit Her Story uh, with six. Yes, you're right to whoop. Who is that? Excellent whooping over there. And it's been, uh, it's been a great year, has it not? GTA 5 added a first-person mode. Uh, at this rate, GTA 6 will just be a lead pipe you take outside and start committing actual crimes with. <laughs> FIFA 16 is so detailed and true to life, there is a great mode where you can play the World Cup in Qatar. As soon as the game kicks off, your PlayStation overheats and it dies as the stadiums are being constructed. <laughs> yeah, why not? You can also play in Moscow, so long as you go to the online store and PayPal 3 million euros into Sepp Blatter's account. There was, uh, there was Batman, Arkham Knight, who's main villain this year, yes. Yeah, yeah, wait, I've not finished. <laughs> Whose main villain this year was Framerate. That's a little one. Well, you know. It's just one for the PC gamers there. And games are getting deeper than ever before. There is a scene in Life is Strange where you have to talk someone out of suicide. Uh, yeah, unusual response there. I'm just saying that is pretty deep. When I was a kid, our biggest aim in gaming was to both pick Chun-Li in Street Fighter and then get them to kick at the same time so it looked like they were scissoring. That's what games used to be, now it's counselling. The long-awaited Assassin's Creed Syndicate launched uh, just last week, just in time for Unity to start working properly. <laughs> I 
I met the developers actually, lovely people, but in our first few meetings their faces kept disappearing. <laughs> and this year, I'm going to get it for that. And this year the industry has obviously faced uh, criticism, but it is responding, it's changing, it's trying to grow. I mean, okay, you could say that The Witcher is a game where a grown man can spend hours pursuing a teenage girl through a forest with a concealed weapon. And sure, you could say that her story is just a chance to spend hours just staring at a crying woman. But that would be ungenerous. Let's just say, welcome to games, where the local time is 1973. And today we will celebrate the best of them. So are you ready for the Golden Joysticks 2015? Well, you should be. If you win an award today, come up, have your photo taken, get your award, then leave. Because some of you will walk away with trophies this afternoon. That's right, it's the correct response, yeah. I've seen those trophies. It's a great irony that for an award that in part celebrates excellence in design, they look the way they do. <laughs> Still, it is the thought that counts. And that thought was, let's not spend too much on the actual awards. <laughs> but there will be winners today. There will also be not winners. Now, notice I did not say losers. Because it's important to remember that today there are no losers. Which is something you rarely get to say in a room full of video games nerds. <laughs> in fact, I will go further. I just want to say, <laughs> you are all winners in my eyes just not in the eyes of the public. <laughs> they voted, I'm just saying. So let's crack on then with the, uh, the first award uh, of the afternoon. We start with Best Original Game, otherwise known as the Sequels Prequel Award. This is, uh, that's true, that's what happens, we all know it. This is in association with Games Radar Plus, so to present it, say hello to the executive editor of Games Radar, Andy Hartup. The future belongs to gaming's new IPs, fresh titles which give us the gaming icons of tomorrow. But what are the brightest and the best original games of 2015? In third place, Kerbal Space Program. The runner-up is Life is Strange. But Andy, what is the best original game? The best original game? Bloodborne. It's Bloodborne! Sake. <laughs> there you go, Bloodborne, everybody. And they will go backstage. Next, it's the joystick for best storytelling. Now, a good game story has a beginning, a middle, and an end you probably didn't stick around for. To present it, please welcome from Revolution Games, Charles Cecil. Storytelling in games has become as nuanced and sophisticated as any film or book, and that's exactly what this award acknowledges. Here are the games at the top of this year's narrative pile. In third place, Pillars of Eternity. The runner-up is Life is Strange. But Charles, who is the winner? The winner, an absolutely brilliant and worthy winner, is The Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Yay!
they go. So next we come to best visual design. What would games be without visual design? They would be radio plays, and no one likes those. This one is sponsored by 3D World, so please welcome its editor, Ian Dean. This award recognises the rich and unforgettable worlds of gaming, true masterpieces of design with the power to immerse and amaze. Here are the worlds that will stay with us forever. In third place, it goes to Ori and the Blind Forest. The runner-up is Dragon Age Inquisition. But who will take it? Ian has the winner. Okay. And the winner is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. In association with DTS, it is on to Best Audio. To present this award, please welcome. They'll be entertaining everyone in this room a bit later on at the after party. On behalf of DTS, it is Nikki and Swanee from Gamer Disco. Whether it's sweeping orchestral scores or bouncy lo-fi beeps, sound design is one of the most important evocative elements of gaming. Here are the top nominees in the Best Audio category. Third place goes to Elite Dangerous. The runner-up is Life is Strange. But who is the winner, boys? And the winner, Ori and the Blind Forest. Well done, guys. Just wait for you to get out. It's a lonely walk now. <laughs> Everybody's staring at you. Now we have best multiplayer. And it's only in online multiplayer games that we get to properly meet and interact with other members of the gaming community. Which is why I no longer do it. But please welcome a legend in his field. I mean this. A man who owns me, well, owes me endless hours of my life back. You'll like this. It is the creator of Kickoff. Dino Dini! From the days where we huddled around tiny televisions to massive interactive online worlds, this award proves that gaming is often a hobby best enjoyed with friends. Here are the greatest multiplayer games of 2015. In third place, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The runner-up is Heroes of the Storm. And just before we find the winner, there's exciting news. Dino, is it true kickoff is coming back? Yes. Yes, he says. It's back where it belongs. Good. Now give us the winner. Okay. Best multiplayer. All right. And the winner is GTA Online. Thank you. Now, apparently, they couldn't be here this afternoon. You wouldn't be booing them if they were next to you. You'd be terrified of them. But they have sent this uh, personal and endearing message, uh, which I will now read out. Unfortunately, we couldn't be here today in person. Now, that much is obvious. They didn't need to write that, did they? 
We are thrilled to achieve this award and extend a huge thank you to all the fans that voted for GTA 5. Touching words, let's hear it for them. Okay. <laughs> Good, I was really, uh, I really felt the feeling there, that's good. But please thank Dino Dini, everybody. You may leave. Now, supported by PC Gamer Weekender, it is best indie game. Please welcome pro gaming editor, and this man is very pro gaming, Chris Thurston. The rise and evolution of indie development proves that anyone with passion, persistence and an amazing idea can experience artistic and commercial success. Here are the best indie games of 2015. In third place is Axiom Verge. And the runner-up is Everybody's Gone to the Rapture. But Chris, talk us through your feelings right now as you're about to announce this. I looked in the envelope and I'm really happy. Okay, good. Way to ruin the mystique. Who is the winner? And the winner is... It's Kerbal Space Program. Kerbal Space Program! Noticed, it's absolutely fine. Tunes that have been played this evening during the awards, you definitely should check out Gamer Disco. We're going to be back with the voice of Geralt of Rivia in just two minutes after a word from our sponsor. I am super excited because sitting next to me is Geralt of Rivia, Doug Cockle. How are you doing? I can touch him. I'm touching Geralt. Isn't that amazing? How are you doing, sir? I'm all right. Thank you very much. Yeah. And how does it feel? Because obviously you guys are up for some huge awards. This is kind of like, is it the Witcher's year, you think? I hope so. I think so. I think it's a great game. I'm really proud to be part of it. So I hope they really take away a lot from this one. I mean, is it kind of, is it kind of cool? To be here. It's totally it's cool. It's so much fun. The vibe out there is great. People are having a great time and it's just, it's a big celebration. Is it, I don't know, is it kind of fun because you also get to, like, you know, you get to be Geralt, but actually no one kind of recognises you in the same way, like if you were super, like a super celebrity? Yeah, yeah, so kind of like I get to be hidden, but sort of famous as well. Yeah, like <laughs> sneaky celebrity. Sneaky celebrity. You. <laughs> um, if you want to hear more from Doug, we're going to be having a good old chat with him after the end of the Twitch stream, so don't forget to tune in. But we're going to be cutting back to the award ceremony in just a few moments. Don't forget to hit us up on Twitch with all of your comments because we'll love to hear them. See you in a few. Someone's going to tell her. 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 Gemma, Gemma, Gemma. They want a speech. They want to do a speech. This is breaking with protocol. Shall we allow them a speech? Stop it. They look like video games characters. Here they are, Splatoon. Oh, wow. Can you please just thank everyone because it's a polite thing to do? Okay. This is an incredible honour and stay fresh. Done. I'm not going to say much, but. You know, I'll get one opportunity to be up here in my whole life. So I thought, if I'm going to put the political world to rights, this should be it. I started out writing the guide for Nuclear Strike from EA on the Super Nintendo. And now I'm winning the award for Splatoon Best Family Game. Everyone in this room has done a similar thing. Lee Curtin. He started out as a secretary, for fuck's sake. And now, look where he is. So thank you, and the more serious point, we've all been here for a while, we've all been drinking, we all started out right down there, some of us have come up here, but the video game industry is a big thing, and we're all honoured to be a part of it, it's an amazing thing. I came from Nuclear Strike, right up to Splatoon, and I know there are many people in this room that have done a similar thing, so let's celebrate the video games industry. 
and for God's sake, next year, vote for Nintendo games. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, if it is a free bar, these things will happen, ladies and gents. <laughs> you get yourself to blame. I was a bit worried when he said, I'm going to take the opportunity to set the world to rights, then start talking about nuclear strikes. But it was all fine. Now on to the most played award, supported by Playfire. Please welcome, uh, well, the CEO and founder, Paul Selyuk. Like last year, this award has been decided by the Playfire community, who have racked millions of hours playing the most popular games of 2015. Here are the titles of the most devoted online communities. No runners-up, just an outright winner, though. So, Paul, who is that winner? The winner of Playfire's most played award is Grand Theft Auto V. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> well, as you know, uh, Rockstar aren't here. Uh, Kenny G was playing the O2 last night. I think they're still recovering. Pretty big night for those guys. Uh, we will keep this award safe. You can have it, Paul, as far as I'm concerned. Melt it down, make something pretty. Paul Soliuk, everybody. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you. <laughs> now it's time for best gaming moment in association with Absolute Radio. So please welcome my brother from another mother. This mother, a chain-smoking part-time shoplifter from Hartlepool. <laughs> it's Absolute Radio's Pete Donaldson. <laughs> oh, uh... It actually just says have a chat with Pete, so that's what I'll do. Okay. What do you want to talk about? H have you been? Fine. Yeah. You still with your uh, missus? That's right. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good, good. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It's good to see you. Great. Um... Let's have the nominees, James. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> this award honours the greatest set pieces in gaming, whether it's saving lives or climbing incredible structures just because they're there. Here are the best magical moments which the gaming playing public voted as this year's best. In third place, saving Kate in Life is Strange. The runner-up is Crossing the Bridge in Dying Light. The winner of a best gaming moment in association with Absolute Radio is... It's another one for Geralt, the bloody Baron Quest in The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Congratulations! having that. You can recycle that. <laughs> so now we have the award for gaming personality. And it is a wide field of nominations this year. On the one hand, the celebrated global head of Sony Worldwide Studios, and on the other, a man named Stampy Longhead. Gaming personality of the year is presented by YouTube Gaming's George Panayotopoulos. Did it? This award acknowledges the true celebrities of the video game world, from YouTube stars to company figureheads. Here's who you voted 2015's Gaming Personality of the Year. Third place goes to Shui Yoshida. In the runner-up spot, Sean Plott. And the winner, please, George. And the winner of Gaming Personality of the Year, PewDiePie. PewDiePie, everybody. Uh, guess what? Oh, here he is. Oh, no, no, he's not yet. Uh, this, was, this was the genuine reason. I asked him the genuine reason that he's not here today. Uh, he somehow thought this was the excuse. It was his birthday last Tuesday. That's the excuse. But we do have a video from the man himself. He's a, he's a lot better on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, no acceptance from him. Let's watch this instead. <laughs> Peggy 16. It is unavoidable. 
We will witness the destruction of the Alliance and the end of this insignificant rebellion. Soldiers of the Rebel Alliance, this is our most desperate hour. You are our only hope. Focus your attack on the walker. Pathetic rebellion ends here. Yes. That looks good. Incidentally, we will make PewDiePie's acceptance speech available after the show as a DLC. <laughs> Charge of 14 quid for it. Now, it is the time for eSports Icon of the Year, supported by Gfinity. This is the only time anyone in this room will win an award with the word sport in it. To present the award, please welcome CEO Neville Upton. Esports is the world's fastest growing spectator sport and the burgeoning billion dollar industry of tomorrow. This award celebrates the personalities who are so crucial to the continued growth and success of competitive gaming. Here's who the public picked as Esports Icon of the Year. Third place goes to Hearthstone, Sebastian Force and Fours. In the runner up spot, Dota 2, Syed Samal Hassan. But please, Neville, reveal the eSports Icon of the Year. And the winner is, it's Counter-Strike Go, it goes to Anders Bloom. Guess what? Uh, Anders Bloom can't be here. He is uh, potholing in the West Country at the moment. But he did send this message. Hello everyone, I'm sorry I couldn't be at the awards ceremony in London, I hope you guys are having a good time and at Twitch as well. Um, I'm very thankful and very humbled to receive this award for Esports Icon of the Year, thanks to Gamer, uh, Games Radar and also thanks to all of you guys obviously for voting for me. Uh, it was a really tough field of competition so um, I'm definitely very honoured and humbled. Also very motivated to keep working, um, it's only been three years, I started in January 2013 and um, almost three years now. I'm right now in Romania doing the next Counter-Strike Major, which is why I couldn't be there, but I do want to um, sort of, you know, send a bit of a message to you guys. If you're out there watching eSports and you're just getting into it now, it's the perfect time. Uh, we are making the transition into a new era of eSports and it's going to be much bigger and much crazier. So uh, you've picked the perfect time and I hope you'll stick around for it. There you go. Yeah, yeah he, look, he looks very sporty as well. Please thank Neville Upton. Thank you, Neville. Thank you. Take that. Cheers. <laughs> Okay, it's a big one now. It's time for Studio of the Year, supported by Hype and Edge Live event. What an incredible year for the studios here tonight. And do celebrate now, because within six months, you'll all be making pachinko machines. If it happened to Kojima, the man who made the most incredible game in history, you can be certain it will happen to you. Start learning how pachinko works, and I'll see you back here next year for the Golden Pachinkos. To present this joystick, though, here's Deputy Editor of Edge, it's Nathan Brown. 
The Golden Joystick Awards isn't just for games, it's also for the studios and the teams who work together to overcome every obstacle, gifting us with the amazing games we're here to celebrate. Here's who the public picked as 2015's Studio of the Year. In third place, it's Bungie. The runner-up is Blizzard. Yeah, but Bungie is a bit like Bungie. It's a bit like Bungie. But softer, just softer. So Nathan, the winner, please. The winner is CD Projekt Red. Now, it is time for Innovation of the Year, supported by Tech Radar. So please welcome Associate Editor of TechRadar.com, it's Hugh Langley. As gaming technology continues to advance, incredible innovations we barely dreamt possible are now within reach of the ordinary gaming public. Here are the technological wonders the public voted Innovation of the Year. In third place, Project Morpheus London Heist Demo. The runner-up is 3D Head Tracking for Nintendo 3DS. But Hugh, the winner for innovation, please. The winner is first-person mode in Grand Theft Auto V. <laughs> Not even here. Do we trust you to look after this trophy and take it away? What will you do with this trophy, Hugh? Um, I'll probably sell it, Danny. He'll sell it. He'll meet in the car park in 40 minutes. Thanks to Hugh Langley. Best gaming platform now, will it be the Atari Lynx? Will it be the Mega CD? Will we finally honour the Philips CDI? This award is in association with Digital Spy, so to tell us, please welcome the Deputy Editor, Matt Hill. This award celebrates the consoles and digital delivery services which engage, amaze and entertain millions of people around the globe. Here are the winning gaming platforms of 2015. In third place, Xbox One. The runner-up is PlayStation 4. But Matt Hill, what could it be? What is the best platform? Outside it's raining, but inside it's wet. It's steam. It's steam. Not here. Unfortunately, Valve couldn't be here this afternoon. This is the third time they've won the award. We'd like to congratulate them on their commitment to avoiding any major announcement with the number three in the title. <laughs> but Matt Hill will look after this for them. Thanks yes, very much indeed, Matt Hill. Cheers. <laughs> okay. A bit of a musical treat for you now, brought to you by our friends at Wargaming. Please welcome, and I'm not being sexist, this is their name, the Blonde Bombshells. Bells. The bombshell bay. The bombshell bells. Sorry. Let me pretend that didn't happen. It's the bombshell bells. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> Mr. What you call him, what you doing tonight? Hope you're in the mood because I'm feeling just right. How's about a corner with a table for two? Where the music's mellow and severe on the food. There's a chance for missing with the blue attitude. You gotta do some dancing to get in the mood. Sister, what you call him, that's the Tommy idea. Something swing or dilla would be good to my ear. Everybody must agree the dancing has charms. When you have a certain one you love in your arms Stepping out with you will be a sweet interlude I build a rub and now it will be in the mood In the mood That's it, I got it In the mood Be real spotted In the mood I wanna hide it Be alive and get the 
the jab you got to learn how. Hep, hep, hep. Hep like a hepper. Pep, pep, pep. Hot as a pepper. Step, step, step. Step like a stepper. We're mugging, we're hugging, we're in the mode now. Mr. What you call him, all you needed was fun You can see the wonders that this evening has done Coffee was so heavy till they hardly can move Now the light is fails and you're right in the groove You were only hungry for some musical food You're positively, absolutely in the mood Sister, what you call him, I'm indebted to you It'll go to show what good and humans can do Never felt so lucky and so fully alive Seems the jam and jumping is a powerful job. Swing a rule is giving me a new attitude. My heart is full of rhythm and I'm in the mood. In the mood. And that's because I got it and I'm in the mood. Your ear will spot it when you're in the mood. Be alive and get the job you got to learn how. Hep, hep, hep. Be your hep like a hep of a lot. Hep, hep, hep. Be your heart. Step, step, and step, step like a step of a mug Huge apologies to the bombshell bells there. I got their name wrong. You'll be seeing more of them a bit later at the after party. But now on to the best gaming performance. I was in both Volume and Assassin's Creed this year. But as I have not been nominated, this award is clearly invalid. Still, let us go through this pointless charade as we welcome from Freestyle Games creative director on Guitar Hero Live, it's Jamie Jackson. Best Gaming Performance celebrates the incredible talents which bring our games to life, making a purely digital hobby feel engaging, real and affecting. Here are the standout gaming performances of 2015. In third place, Troy Baker as Pagan Min in Far Cry 4. The runner-up is Mark Hamill as the Joker in Batman Arkham Knight. Well, you've got to be good if Mark Hamill is your runner-up, but Jamie, who is the winner? <clears throat> The winner is Ashley Birch as Chloe in Life is Strange.
Ashley Birch seems to have been played by a whole cast of characters. That's good. That's good. It's talent. That was only one person up there. Very versatile. Now on to best PlayStation game. This one is sponsored by Microsoft and there are no finalists. <laughs> Joking. To present this award, please welcome the editor of official PlayStation magazine. It's Matthew Pellet. The PlayStation 4 continues to grow into a significant console powerhouse thanks to a fantastic selection of exclusive titles. Here's what the public voted as this year's best PlayStation game. In third place, Uncharted, the Nathan Drake collection. The runner-up is Until Dawn. But Matthew, what is the best PlayStation game? Uh, the winner of the best PlayStation game is Bloodborne. Bloodborne, everybody. Now on to best Xbox game. This category is sponsored by official Xbox magazine. It'd be weird if it wasn't. And to present the award, please welcome the editor, Matthew Castle. The Xbox One continues to grow strength and popularity thanks to a bold selection of powerful, diverse, exclusive games. Here are the titles the public voted as best Xbox game of 2015. In third place, Sunset Overdrive. The runner-up is Halo Master Chief Collection. But Matthew, what was voted best Xbox game? The winner of the best Xbox game is Ori and the Blind Forest. Ori and the Blind Forest. Now we move swiftly on to best Nintendo game. Well, it was Mario Kart. Good night. But what else competes? Well, this category is sponsored by Games Master Magazine. To present the award, please welcome editor Matthew Gilman. Nintendo may be the granddaddy of gaming, but it still makes some of the most innovative, smart and surprising games in the world. Here's what the public voted as the best Nintendo game of 2015. In third place, Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate. The runner-up is The Legend of Zelda, Majora's Mask 3D. Well, Matthew, in your loudest, proudest voice, announce the winner. Uh, and the winner of the best Nintendo game is Splatoon. Splatoon! Someone call security, someone call security. We need security up here. Shall we see what else this man has got in him? Who is with me? What more pearls of wisdom can this man deliver to the industry? Shall we hear? Sounds like no, but I'm going for it anyway. Please say something. Gemma, this is, this is your award because you worked in the game. I've so. already used the best pun we have. This is incredible. I mean, literally, that's all I've got. And it got. sounds worse on the TV ads. Mm -hmm, so. Yeah. Yep, good word. <laughs> so the, the truth is... <laughs> I, wrote, I wrote a two, three-level guide on lemmings before I did Nuclear Strike. 
So the 1,500 quid that I got from EA is probably going to get retracted anytime soon. It also turns out, number two, that Lee Curtin was a receptionist, not a secretary. I just got slapped about that because apparently it's not right. Um, but anyway, it's fantastic that Gemma has got recognised for Splatoon this year and the whole team. Thank you very much, guys. And, but again, it's not just about Nintendo, it's about our industry, which is an amazing place to work in at the moment, where people can't get jobs year in, year out. We have jobs and we love it. So, thank you very much. Raise your shot glasses, raise your beers, raise your dodgy Moe minis to the video games industry because we work in a great place, right? Cheers to you. There you go! <laughs> well, it was a risk. Some risks don't pay off, you know? I took the risk. We'll see what happens. Now, now it's on to best PC game. Can I still say PC? This year, PC went mad. This category is sponsored by PCGamer.com. To present the award, please welcome the editor, Tom Senior. PC gaming remains on the cutting edge and more and more people are embracing the control and diversity of choice offered by custom machines. Here are the top nominees for this year's best PC game. In third place, Heroes of the Storm. The runner-up is City Skylines. But Tom, who took the most votes? It's Grand Theft Auto 5. It's Grand Theft Auto 5. It is. And, and Tom, are they here? Have they arrived? Are they here, Rockstar? Are they here? No, they are not here. They're not here, are they? I'm going to leave now, I suppose. So. You leave quietly while I say, let's watch a video. Tom, everybody. Yep. Well, yes, we are back here. Grand Theft Auto just continually, never-endingly winning stuff. Uh, we're just going to go away for a quick word from our sponsors, and we'll see you in a few. Introducing Headphone X, a DTS technology designed to make all of your music, movies, and games sound better through headphones. So now you can have great sound on any of your connected devices. guys yeah I'm back here with some people who should know exactly what's going to be happening tonight otherwise you shouldn't be doing the jobs you're doing this is Chris from PC Gamer Pro and uh, Matt Castle from OXM how are you enjoying your night so far it's been great I really enjoyed the word bungo Did craters you? of bungee ah, <laughs> good stuff opening envelopes can be quite challenging it can really be hard yeah. <laughs> so I mean you surprised by any of the awards that have, you know who's gone to so far um, I was really, really pleased to see Ori in the Blind Forest take best audio and best original Xbox game. Absolutely fantastic game. Yeah. Really good to see something a little bit niche get a, get a bit of love from the crowd. So yeah, it was cool. We do, we do love a little indie kind of coming in from the left field kind of thing. Yeah, right? especially up against like the big hitters of Microsoft. I think that was a really great achievement for it. So. I mean, what's been your favourite game that you played this year? I'm going to be go back to the indie well and say her story again, partly because it's been in so many of these categories that yeah. The Witcher has subsequently won. Yeah. So I'd really like to get something later on, but it's a, it's a phenomenal it? game. I did really recently, having shamefully I pretended to, to have finished it for about I three weeks. I need to ask you questions because I'm not quite at the All end right. yet. It's really, really cool. Um, how about you, Matt? Um, I, I, I kind of agree with the public on, on The Witcher 3. I think it's an absolutely fantastic game. Um, how many hours? How many hours um, have you clocked? I've, I've currently clocked about 70. I've not finished it. I kind of uh, plug away at it occasionally. It doesn't end. It doesn't end. There oh, isn't an end. Spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, it doesn't end, okay? It just keeps on going. Oh my word. I mean, what do you think is going to win Game of the Year? There seems to be a pattern emerging okay, regarding the game is... you just talked about. Yeah. It might probably be The Witcher, yeah. even though I would like it to be probably Destiny. Okay, and what do you think? Um, I think it might be that funny man from Nintendo with the magic. Yeah, yeah. Okay. he was good, I liked All him. All right, we're going to chuck back to the awards now. We'll see you back again very, very soon. Thanks. With two beers. Now, on to the Breakthrough Award. This category is sponsored by Kotaku UK, and to present the award, please welcome Kaza McDonald. The Breakthrough Award is selected by a panel of gaming experts and is awarded to titles that burst out of nowhere, indelibly altering our perception of the industry. The nominees for the Breakthrough Award are, in third place, Moon Studios for Ori and the Blind Forest. The runner-up is Coldwood Interactive for Unravel. But who, Kazir, wins the award for Breakthrough? Well, 
The winner of the Golden Joystick Breakthrough Award is, oh cool, it's Sam Barlow for her story. <laughs> now, Sam couldn't be here, I know, but has sent us the following message, and again I'll try and read it with some feeling. Sorry I couldn't be there for the awards. I'm currently on the second leg of Her Story World Tour, which involves travelling to exotic locations and refusing to answer people's questions about what really happened in the game in all different languages. I am honoured and humbled that the public voted for the game. It means so much, thanks to my family and to Viva, whose performance is at the heart of Her Story. Thank you very much. Keza will look after it. Keza McDonald, everybody. And her story. So now, not publicly voted, it's the Critics' Choice Award. That's right, yeah, to present the award, please welcome from Future PLC, it's Group Editor-in-Chief, Daniel Dawkins. The Critics' Choice is a new award this year, and it was chosen by a panel of 18 journalists worldwide who were asked to pick their favourite game of the year. Let's take a look at what they had to say. I'd call it the most emotionally affecting game I've played, and not just of this year, I think that I've ever played. Basically, all I've been playing all year. Thematically, aesthetically, in terms of how it plays, it is a perfectly crafted video game. It is one of the best RPGs I've ever played. So for the first time in a long time playing this game, I actually felt like playing other games were kind of a waste of time. It's the closest any game has come to replicating the sheer joy of having a really busy, stressful job. You get a dog, which obviously makes it one of the best games of the year by default. Every area you come across is more horrible in some way than the last one. I don't know why I kept playing it. Friends lists actually matter now that this game is here. I love that you can stick animals and people on tiny balloons. Uh, that's just another fun touch in a really, really detailed and brilliant open world game. It's that weirdest of things in that it, it's a universally adored, critical darling of a game that loads of people hate. Wait, am I even allowed to have it for Game of the Year this year? Why hasn't anyone played this game but me? It's amazing. It's so good. My ultimate game of the year. My ultimate game of the year is. My ultimate game of the year is. My favourite game of the year is. My game of the year. My game of the year. Kept you waiting, huh? Is Life is Strange. It's Destiny. Destiny. It's Metal Gear Solid 5, The Phantom Pain. Bloodborne. With The Witcher 3. Obviously, it's Metal Gear Solid 5. The top nominations in the Critics' Choice Award are, in third place, is Her Story. The runner-up is The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. But Dan, who is the winner of the Critics' Choice? An incredibly close award that went down to the final votes, but the winner is Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Critics' choice there. Now, penultimate award, everybody. We get on to the Most Wanted Game Award. This category is supported by The Sun. And to present the award, please welcome the Deputy Head of Publishing and The Sun on Sunday's Gaming Editor. It's Dan Silva. We've celebrated the games of 2015, but what about next year with so many amazing titles on the horizon? This was a ferociously contested category. Here's what the public voted as their most wanted game in third place, Star Wars Battlefront. The runner-up is Deus Ex Mankind Divided. But Dan Silva, who is the winner? Thank you. And the winner is of most wanted game, Fallout 4. Fallout 4! Fallout 4, 
floor, everybody. So this is it. We come to our final category, the ultimate game of the year. It's the last award of the day. It's the biggie. It's not just a good game. It's not just the best game. It is the ultimate game. After this, no more games will be made. This is the end of the industry. And it was clear that this would take some detailed forensic detective work to track down who was in the running. Luckily, there was someone who knew how. It's been about a year since we were last here, hasn't it? And yet you're still searching. And you want to know who the winner is? And what makes you think I know? Look, okay, I'll tell you what I can. There's some traditional stuff, you know? Monsters, swords, fight the dragon, save the princess. traditional stuff. Sometimes we'll have to look in dark places to find the truth. You haven't worked it out yet, have you? So close. There's just one question left to answer. So, to present this award, and this is a coup, please welcome the star of her story, Viva Seifert! be honest, it's not the best walk-on music ever. <laughs> not that exciting. Uh, but she's here, everybody. Viva's here. The ultimate game of the year is our most prestigious award, acknowledging the game that defined the past year. The competition was intense, the games were incredible, but what was the ultimate game of 2015? In third place, Life is Strange. The runner-up is Batman Arkham Knight. And shall we cut to the chase? Shall we see what the ultimate game is? Viva, please announce it. Okay, the winner of the Golden Joystick Awards Ultimate Game of the Year is... <clears throat> the Witcher 3, Wild Hunt. Hey! of an ultimate game award without a speech, can we? It's over to you. All right, they gave me a short allowance, actually. So um, I'll try to be brief. The night didn't start very nice because I had a gravy, actually, all over my hair and my jacket. By the way, thank you, David, from Table 19, Banner and Amco, for borrowing me the jacket, substitution jacket. Um, uh, second of all, most importantly, I wanted to thank all the fans who voted for, uh, for us, for the studio, for the game, in all the categories. Uh, thank you to all the Bandai Namco friends at... Uh, Table 19, hello guys. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, that's pretty much it. Last part of the piece I wanted to say, I also know Lee Curtin, and I'm very happy I got to find out so much about his past, and I'm willing to find out more. So waiting to talk to the guy from the uh, Splatoon team. Thanks so much in the name of the whole CDP Red studio. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Uh, so, ladies and gents, that is it for the 33rd Golden Joystick Awards. A huge thank you to all our sponsors. Congrats to everyone who was nominated or won tonight. Give yourselves a huge round of applause again. And please also thank all your waiters and waitresses this evening. Thank you very much. That was it. Good night.
So that brings the 2015 awards to a close. Let's hear it for the brilliant Danny Wallace.